show me to picture the smoke coming out or falling or the people jumping out the windows. I, I visually, you know, that's, it's ingrained in our brains. Um, so we're showing a clip that actually just shows the people's response to everything. And you just see that the shrines that the words mm -hmm. come from. And, and Kevin's comment was, this is about moving on. It's not about reliving it. It's about honoring and, and the people who are lost. Mm -hmm. to be on the committee for this concert series and uh, scheduling around here is always a nightmare because we can't have football games we have you know, all these major concerts so you don't want to do something during an orchestra concert it just so happened that the only time that was available this entire semester was September 11th for a Sunday concert and we booked it without really realizing what it was until after it was booked and they were like oh gosh <laughs> the 10th anniversary and and then it just popped in my oh yeah there's that piece perfect that we have to do this as a way of honoring and, and remember remembering the day the mezzo soprano who first sang it apparently from the notes in the the published score she went through her own journey of trying to understand the events of 9-11 she was walking around town and all the makeshift memorials that were put up, the chain link fence where people would put in, push in notes and the shrines that were, that were put up around town. And there were all these messages left and she took pictures of, of things trying on her own personal journey to understanding that. Um, and I guess she had this collection of things and she's friends with Libby Larson and they, she decided to set them to music. morning, like most people in, uh, in Illinois at the time. I was actually uh, playing hooky from, uh, from school uh, at the University of Illinois, uh, waiting uh, delivery of my piano, which was having shipped from New York at that time, from upstate. Uh, and in fact, still on, on the piano underneath is a little sticker that says delivery date uh, 1101. Um, and so I had just, I had I had vacuumed the area in the living room where the piano was going and was waiting for the, uh, the drivers to arrive and I clicked on the TV and saw a plane flying into a large building and it probably like most people who saw that in that particular moment, I thought, well, what movie is this? Just what I thought. And it took me a minute or two to realize that what was going on. And interestingly enough, a couple hours later when the, uh, the movers did arrive, they came to the door. They'd of course had been on the road, um, but they said, we'll bring your piano in, but can we come in and watch TV for a while? And I just said, by all means come in, and so they ended up sitting there half the afternoon. It was, you know, surreal, of course, you're, you're, you're seeing it on a, on, a, on a flat screen, um, not being there in the, in the dust and, 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 and amongst the, the ruins, uh, quite literally, but you uh, had a very clear sense that uh, the world was never going to be the same. I mean, life was going to go on, but this was something that was going to affect everybody. In all of the build, on all, so many of the buildings, so many of the restaurants and um, shops had signs saying, immediately saying, blood drive, and where to go to give blood, and there was no need. And that was a devastating part of that day. And of course, and what we probably both saw, a lot of people walking north with their suitcases, you know, their briefcases, and covered in ash, and just stunned. In fact, yeah, Libby Larson talks about um, the towers going and saying, stunned to death. Those towers were stunned to death. And so were the people. Crying, 
just walking through Central Park, just crying. And so I felt like I had to do something, you know. And some friends of mine and I, we walked down as far as you go to, to Houseman Street, I think, is where they had blockaded everything. And truckloads of things started arriving from all over the country. People, children putting together, collecting their boots, showing up for the workers. There were there was bread to make sandwiches. And so this just little tent city of volunteers just appeared. And it took up like a whole city block. Mm -hmm. And there were piles of, um, of, of work boots because the firemen were burning through them every day. The souls were burning through as they were going around looking for it. And so they would come, and this is where they would come. They would come to this volunteer spot that all this stuff was just showing up. You know, felt like everybody, New York City, the place where nobody speaks to each other, and suddenly it was <laughs> uh -huh. such a neighborly yeah. thing. And, and, yeah. and playing this piece also brings that, those emotions to me as well.